Hey guys, so just real quick before I get to my thoughts on the Sony a7S, I wanted to introduce this video because I'm editing it and I'm realizing that I have a tendency to ramble on about a whole bunch of different stuff. I just did it off the cuff. I didn't, you know, um, bullet points the things that I wanted to, to talk about. So just wanted to give you guys a brief intro. Um, what you're going to see in this, it's not a detailed review. I'm not comparing it to other cameras with any any data or empirical tests or anything like that. It's just basically my stream of consciousness on the camera. I talk about battery life, working with the Metabones adapter, auto fo focusing, um, you know, 120 frames per second that it offers, the dynamic range that it has, so really just everything the camera offers. And my thoughts on it from, um, from my standpoint, what I do, which is mostly wedding films. Um, so here you guys go. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Maybe get some popcorn. Um, it's kind of longer, but uh, yeah, here it is. So one of the biggest reasons why um, I am very into this camera is the fact that it's mirrorless. Um, the GH4 is mirrorless as well. Um, and what that gives you is the ability to adapt essentially any glass you want onto this camera. Um, as you might know from my previous videos, I'm really into vintage glass. I think they do an excellent job for video. They're affordable and most of them have manual um, aperture rings, which is awesome for adapting because then you don't need a smart adapter like, like this one I have on right now. It's the Metabones uh, EF to E mount. Um, it allows me to control the aperture of a lot of the EF mount glass I have, like the Sigma 50 1.4. I have a uh, Tamron 70 to 200, 2.8, the new updated one, which I love. Um, gives me great images for video. Um, but for some reason, this Metabones adapter, I've not been completely happy with it. Um, it doesn't work for, or doesn't let me control my aperture on my 70 to 200 Tamron 2.8. Um, it gives me autofocus and IS with it, but I can't control my aperture, uh, which is a you know, the only reason I really want it. I'm usually using sticks, so I don't really need IS, and I'm not using autofocus, so the one thing I do want with this adapter is not really working. Um, I'm not sure, I, I read somewhere today, I think it was maybe in the comments of Philip Bloom's Facebook or something, um, that there are some issues going on with these Metabones adapters with the A7S. Uh, the camera has locked up a lot for me. Um, Sometimes I won't turn it on, or I'll turn it on and I'll get nothing but a black screen back here. And then what I'll do is I can just slowly turn the lens just like a centimeter or so, then snap it back, and then it'll pop up and give me a video feed. So there's little quirks with it, so I'm not completely happy, but hopefully Metabones can update it so it works more seamlessly with the A7S. So like I said on the outside of this video, I'm gonna address this camera from a event, wedding, filmmaking, standpoint since that's usually what I'm using it for. Um, I'm not ever going handheld. It's, it, it is a small form factor. Um, the, the, the DSLRs do fit better in my hands, but this is still really nice. I mean, when I shoot with my old Pentax ME Super and old film camera, this has a very similar feel. Like It's a very nice feel. I, I, I do like it. Um, but when I'm doing event filmmaking, all my cameras are either on a monopod, a tripod, a glide cam, um, so I'm never holding it. So for filmmaking, um, I don't think you really need to worry about the form factor. Some people say, oh, it, it's too small. I, I don't see how that, I don't see how having something too small would, would ever be an issue. Um, maybe if you're trying to balance your glide cam. Um, I did have to put some extra weights on the top to, to, to balance it on the HD 4000. Um, but other than that, um, I really do like the, the, the small form factor. Um, it does have a flippy out screen. Um, you know, so you can get low angles or, you know, um, high angles either way. The, the bad thing is I can't flip it out and look at it um, when I'm recording myself like this. I'm, I'm shooting on a 60D right now, which is super helpful um, for framing and everything if you're flying solo doing interviews. But um, um, I do wish Sony would put one of the flip out ones, but it, it's, still, it's still better than just, you know, what comes on the, the 5D Mark III, a flat screen, which isn't very helpful. The, the S log on here, Picture Profile 7, is awesome to get an amazing dynamic range. I think in video, like in reality, it's 14 stops, which is pretty, pretty awesome coming from blown out Canon DSLR footage all the time. Um, the bad part of that, about that is its native ISO is 3200, so you can't go under that, which means you always have to have an ND filter on the front if you're going outside. 
um, if you don't want to shoot at like f18 and one five hundredth of a second. You can also get uh, adapters for EF to E mount uh, that have built in NDs. I know Photodiox makes one, I think it's called. I don't know, something throttle, ND throttle, uh, which is super awesome so you don't have to worry about screwing uh, your filters and taking them off and putting them on every other lens you have and dealing with step up, step down rings, that kind of stuff. Um, the bad part is that you can't, um, you won't be able to change. They don't have electronic communication like the Metabones. So if you do want to use an ND like that, then you should be using, you know, vintage lenses or some of the Rokinon, Samyang or Cine lenses that have aperture control. Um, um, mechanically. Um, another one they have is, I think it's called the Holy Manta. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I know it was kickstarted. It's, it's the same um, adapter with built-in ND. And the awesome thing, if, if I was getting one, I think I'd go with them because you can actually take out um, the ND completely and there's a clear setting. So if you have um, the, uh, the Photodiox one, there is no zero, there's no clear. So if you do run it inside and you, you, you're using a ND, you have to switch it to the lowest setting, which might not be enough or low enough. So I do like the Holy Manta um, that you can have just clear. So that, that, that's super helpful. Um, hopefully either Photodiox or Holy Manta, they can create a version that does have electronic communication. So, you know, I can use things like this beautiful 51.4 that Sigma just put out. So you'll probably find a lot more in-depth and comprehensive comparisons between the A7S and the GH4 from other people. Um, but I'm just going to talk about a couple features in this camera that made me decide to go with it over the GH4. Um, okay, so number one, there is currently an adapter for EF glass um, to go on to the Sony, which there is not one yet for Micro Four Thirds. Um, there is for the... Um, the Blackmagic pocket camera, but not for native Micro Four Thirds. So that's one issue. I couldn't use my, my Canon lenses on it as of yet. I know Metabones is coming out with one, so maybe that won't be an issue, you know, whenever you're watching this, if it's been a month or two. Um, number two, this is obviously full frame. So I don't have to think in my head crop factors. Okay, if I put this 50 on the GH4 and I'm shooting in the cinema 4K, well that's a 2.3 crop, so great, I have 130 mil now on. I don't have to worry about this in full frame. It's native, it's used, It's what I have on my 5D, it makes my life easier. Um, the biggest reason I think to go with the GH4 is you get that 4K. Um, downsize to 1080p, which is what everybody's delivering on anyways. Um, yes, it looks a little bit better on GH4 downsized, compared to this 1080p native, but it's so close that I'd rather just skip that step, um, skip having to worry about it, and just taking the 1080p straight out of this guy. That, that's how happy I am with, with the 1080p footage that this, this puts out. Um, the, uh, the other huge benefit of 4K is that yes, you can zoom in, you can crop, you can do so much with that footage and get so many different angles that it, it's, it's, it's incredibly useful to have it. If you have it, definitely shoot in 4K. Um, but the reason why I'm okay giving that up for just 1080p like this is because built in is the APS-C crop mode. So essentially every lens I use with this, I can get two focal lengths out of um, just by going into the menu and switching APS-C crop mode on. Um, it looks amazing. I don't see any degradation to the image compared to shooting in just full frame mode. Um, the one downside is that I haven't found a way to set APS-C crop mode to one of the custom buttons. If Sony can update that in the next firmware so it's a quick custom just one click button to go from full frame to APS-C crop that would be that would be simply amazing. So if you're shooting with 50 you want to get a little telephoto boom APS-C crop you're shooting around 85. If you're shooting with a 135 prime quick button boom you're shooting at 200. I would rather do that then have 4K and I have to do it in post. That's gonna take more time than just one click of a button. But as is, that's the biggest negative, despite how customizable this camera is, that I can't assign crop mode to a custom button. Sony, please fix that. So I've had this camera for about a week now and I've used it in a variety of situations. Um, I'm in Arizona, so our wedding season is pretty much dead right now. Um, it's July 22nd, I think. Um, but I have shot music video with it. Um, took a day trip down to Tombstone, Arizona and shot some footage with it. Um, 
tried some some goofy stuff with my little brother uh, to try out the 720p uh, 120 frame per second uh, mode which is pretty awesome that gives you five times uh, slow motion so pretty awesome when you do go to 720p and even uh, 1080p in the 60p mode um, there are some more there are some artifacts there's some more some aliasing more more than aliasing that's for sure um, going on um, but it's still not as bad uh, maybe the 720 120 frames per second is as 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 bad as say um, a Canon you know APS-C crop you know maybe not quite that bad not as bad as a 5D Mark II um, but there is more right there um, in the 1080p 60 frames per second um, it's a little bit it's very minimal um, you have to be looking for it um, so not an eyesore compared to the 720 20p mode um, but very usable still and so having 120 frames per second is incredibly awesome. It does go into APS-C crop mode when you do that um, at 720p, which is okay. Um, the noise on this camera, I mean, obviously it's it's, it's pretty awesome in low light. Um, I have shot as high as eight or 10,000 ISO and haven't had to use any noise reduction. Uh, the grain pattern is very filmic. Um, it's not annoying and distracting. Um, digital-ish like the Canons have. Um, I know that sounds, I don't know, maybe pompous or cheesy. Oh, it's got the good film grain. Um, but I like it. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It, it looks it looks good. And like I said, I, ha I haven't had to use noise reduction. That's the biggest pain in the butt for me is putting on noise reduction and having my render, my export time, like, quadruple. So I hate having to do that. And with this camera, I'll never have to essentially worry about it. Like I said, so from coming so coming from wedding film perspective, this camera is what I've always wanted. Um, shooting with the 5D um, Mark II, I don't ever want to go over 1600 ISO, to be honest with you. Um, it gets too noisy for my personal taste after that. But in reception, that means if I'm shooting at 1600 ISO, I have to be in it and at 150th of a second shutter, then I'm pretty much at 1.4 wide open on either an 85, 35, or 50 to shoot and get okay looking footage. But I always have to go higher than that and I hate doing it, but 3200 on a 5D Mark II, that's too much. Then I'm gonna to have to seriously clean it up in post. Uh, with a 5D Mark III, I can go to 6400 and still be happy with it. I'll still clean it up, add some noise reduction, but it's still a pain in the butt. With this, I'd be happy, I'd be fine going to 8,000, 10,000, maybe 12,500 and not putting any noise reduction on, which is a lifesaver for me in post. GH4 noise capability, I wouldn't go over 1,600. It's like I'm shooting with a 5D Mark II as far as ISO goes, noise performance. So for me, I can't go with the GH4 if I'm doing weddings. It's just not, not enough for what my receptions demand. Um, I would certainly be comfortable doing a wedding with this. Um, I, I am nervous about the Metabones adapter with all the funky issues that have been going on, like locking up the camera, um, suddenly losing control of my aperture, or jumpy aperture, or weird noises coming from the lenses sometimes. Um, again, I'm using a lot of third-party third party lenses like the Sigma, the Tamrons. Um, for the most part, they're okay, but and I know Metabones is going to update that, so hopefully that 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 does fix those issues. Um, it's not really, I mean, compared to the GH4, which there there is no adapter at this point. Um, it's even funky; it takes a lead. Um, I do wish the record button was a little bit more prominent. I mean, not. I mean, I like that's kind of hidden, so you, you don't accidentally touch it, but it's a little too. It doesn't give me enough feedback that it's that it's been pressed in my opinion, like when I'm thinking about framing and getting audio and what the bride and groom are running off to do, um, I don't want to have to put all my attention to make sure record was hit properly. Um, so that's my one beef. Um, and then not having a flippy out screen um, in other directions. The battery life, um, when I was researching this camera, um, the battery life was, it worried me a little bit, um, but honestly, I'd still be fine doing a wedding with the battery life. Um, make sure you turn airplane mode on so you have Wi-Fi and NFC and that stuff disabled so it's not needlessly draining your battery. 
Um, it's not as good as the Canon LPE6 battery as far as battery life. You know, I might be able to shoot on that for a solid three or four hours without having to change. Uh, four might be a little, it depends. maybe it was brand new four hours. Um, this guy, um, maybe about two and a half hours continuously recording, maybe a little bit less, um, give or take 20 minutes or so. Um, but, I mean, so you have to change the battery maybe once, one more time after an eight hour day or something like that. Um, and the batteries are, are pretty nice and small, so, you know, it's not like they're going to add a lot of weight to your bag carrying them around. Um, I picked up these Vivitar batteries on Amazon, two for like 26 bucks, so they're cheaper than LP6s too, Canon's battery. Um, I found they've been similar to uh, the Sony um, OEM battery. Um, the other awesome thing about buying this camera from Sony is they ship you two batteries instead of just one, so thank you Sony. Um, I bought uh, just a passive adapter, um, EF to E mount for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Um, I have a 35 prime, 50 prime, 85 prime, 135 millimeter prime, and 200 millimeter prime that all have manual aperture dials. So I don't even need the Metabones, which is yeah another $400 investment. So I can give 25 bucks to somebody on Amazon to get that passive mount and still shoot all fine and have quick change in my aperture and be a happy camper and pick up one of those uh, ND adapters and be good to go. So ultimately, I would equate this entire system to what C100 shooters are, are using with, are experiencing. So if I had to compare this to a system, I wouldn't compare it to the 5D Mark II. I think that the 1080p image coming out of here um, the near absence of artifacts on uh, 1080p at least, um, 24, 30 frames per second, is, 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 it blows the 5D Mark III out of the water. So I'd compare this to the C100. Um, as far as a camera system, yes, it's a mirrorless camera. Yes, it doesn't have a better form factor. Yes, it doesn't have native XLR inputs. Yes, it doesn't have an ND filter. Um, but you can get like I said, you can get an ND filter built into the mount if you have manual aperture lenses. Um, you can buy an XLR adapter to get this. Um, and it's given you a better codec. The XAV um, CS, I think. Um, so I've mixed some of those letters around. Um, it's awesome. Um, it's better than what, as far as how it, how it handles grading, it does better than what I get out of the Canons. It does better than what the C100 gives with their ABC HD. Um, it's not a huge bit right now, like the GH4, but it's certainly enough, and, and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, again, I'm not a professional colorist or a professional grader, so um, maybe go to one of those guys for their professional opinion on it, but for what I do for wedding films and grading those, i um, super duper happy with it. Um, the picture profiles that come in this guy, super customizable to the point where I have no idea what I'm even working with. Um, I know Dave Dugdale, um, he's putting together an in-depth review for this and, and he's super thorough on that kind of stuff and I'm sure he'll tell you what all the differences are and I know he's been posting pictures on Facebook, um, playing with different settings and seeing what that look gives. Um, I've been kind of happy just going with the presets. I'll stick with S-Log, Picture Profile 7 because I want that dynamic range, I want that that filmic look essentially when you grade it and there's not blown highlights everywhere it won't look as digital as DSLR-E um, that's what I like if it's just too bright or we don't have an ND then I'll just switch to Picture Profile 6 which is the Cine 4 Gamma I really like that and you can go down all the way to 200 ISO um, no 100 ISO um, but I think I was using a different uh, color gamut uh, I think the Cinema one or Anyway, so I, I, it gives you a different ISO range, which is super helpful. Um, so now the cool thing is, you know, it takes um, SDXC cards. Um, so I had a 64 gigabyte already, popped it right in just to class 10, nothing fancy. You got it for like 26 bucks, 64 gigs on sale from Newegg. Um, no issues, can record just fine with all the features, um, which is nice. I don't have to buy faster cards. Um, I'm already invested in CF cards with the Canon RAW hack, so um, I'm glad I don't have to go buy faster SD cards like I would with the GH4, even though they're relatively affordable. Um, um, if there's any criticism I can give, it's that the menu, I mean, it, it's, it's a fine menu, it's just, 
I don't know. It's just where things are isn't super intuitive to me. Um, and, and it's a little... You get into a quagmire. I don't know. Not not my favorite. Again, I've only had it for a week, so maybe I'll, I'll like it more. Um, but just a little too... I don't know. I just don't like it. Uh, um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Canon responds to the A7S and the GH4. Um, I think there are a lot of people who are leaving Canon for these systems um, just to get simply better image quality. Just the DSLR footage that Canon is giving is just not, not cutting it anymore. Um, it's too soft, It's the dynamic range is just not enough. Um, and not to say that it's not enough, it's just you're paying for, you're overpaying for less when you can get GH4 in this and it, and it just blows out of the water in those areas. So there's no reason that you shouldn't want more from those cameras um, um, if this is what's available. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I don't think they need to give internal 4K like the GH4. Um, I think if they, so long as they give it 4K out, that should be enough. Um, essentially what, in my opinion, they need to do is they need to come out with a one, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but what they need to do is they need to come out with a 1DC for $3,500. Um, as far as the video side goes, they can totally cripple the stills that they want, that's fine or dumb it down but what they need is what the 1DC offers as far as video features at 3500 you could even get rid of internal 4k and just make it HDMI out 4k like the Sony but that's what we need we want an APS-C crop mode if we can't get 4k um, we need a clean 1080p image no more moray no more aliasing and not so muddy and soft out of camera like the Mark III the 5D Mark III that requires sharpening and we just just give us a clean image like the GH4 and the A7S gives us. That's what we want. Um, but just basic things, peaking, zebras. I know, I know you don't want to cripple your cinema line and you know protect your C100, your C300. Um, but I don't know. Sony and GH4, they're taking my money away from Canon. Yeah, if Canon jumps on the boat and gets with it, I have no problem going back to Canon. You know, I, I do photography. I'm keeping my 5Ds for for that purpose, um, so I can use all these lenses. Um, but ultimately, I think A7S and the GH4 are probably the best best on the market right now. So if you guys have any questions or thoughts about this camera, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, always, always into discussing camera stuff with anybody. Um, hopefully you guys thought this was maybe not so much informative, but interesting as far as a dialogue or monologue goes. Um, so, uh, see you guys later. Again, thanks for uh, checking out my video, guys. Hopefully you found it informative and enjoyed it. Um, definitely subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a lot more content. Um, I'm currently working on a video, an in-depth, detailed review comparison, um, comparing the Sigma 50 1.4 Art that just came out a couple months ago. Um, and I'm not going to compare it to the Canon 1.2 or the Zeiss Otis, or any Canon for that matter. I'm going to compare it to um, an old vintage Prime 50 1.8 that I have. This is a Vivitar lens, which Vivitar has just rebranded uh, different manufacturers. So this one was made by Cosina, and you're familiar with them. They make glass for Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Zeiss, Leica, um, and I've been super happy with this guy. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how they perform. And honestly, I think in the center, wide open, it's going to be just as sharp as a Sigma, which is a bold claim, but that's how much I like this guy. Um, so that should be interesting. Subscribe to get that, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.